All right. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Man, so this is never in my notes, but I think every church I've visited, this is how it starts. Man, I am just so encouraged with the variety of the body because we don't do church the same everywhere. My church body doesn't meet just like this. And, uh, but it's just amazing and incredible to see how this body raises their voices in praise of, of our Lord. And, and uh, I'm just so encouraged by that, really filled up because of that. So uh, thank you all. Um, yeah, so about a month ago, Pastor Dave gave me a call and he said, hey, would you want to fill the pulpit for me? And I was like, sure. Click. Oh, I've never done that before. <laughs> So I've been a little bit kind of nervous about this, like, oh man, a whole service, what's that going to be? Um, but no, it's all good because we're just talking about what God's doing in the world and uh, we can be encouraged about that. So um, we're going to do kind of a little bit different today. Um, we're we're going to be combining two different things. So I'm going to be sharing what our whole ministry is about, but at the same time, we're going to be talking about partnership in the gospel as a topic and uh, and just seeing what scripture says about that, and then we'll just follow that story as we go through an example of how the Lord is reaching people uh, over in New Guinea. So uh, we are the Lilies. Uh, my wife's over here, and uh, she has our newest edition. This is what we looked like in November when we came and saw you. So we've grown since then. Um, so yeah, Levi and Julia, Lily, and Clark and Brooke are with their grandparents today. Um, but Okay. Okay. Was that me or you? That was you? Okay. All right. So we're at that awkward stage right now where, where she's so new that we don't have a good family picture. Um, but this is the, like the only picture of the five of us right now. But baby Brielle was born uh, April 20th, and uh, she has been really good, which we're really thankful for. Uh, just really sleepy, hungry, and happy. So we can't complain. Um, Yep, so here's just a, a picture of the other two, and I caught Brielle's sleep smiling, which I think is always fun. So, um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know us, uh, we're just pretty local. Um, I was working at Lewis Lumber Products up until recently with Judy. Uh, um, I left there in December to pursue this full time. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's see here. Okay, so now we're going to totally switch gears. We're going to go super wide-angle view at uh, the state of humanity in the world today. So we know that the world is in darkness because in the beginning, God created the world perfect, and we were all uh, created in his image, but then sin, right? Uh, Adam and Eve chose to, to sin against God and because of that, they were cut off from the life source because God's perfect. And uh, so then we entered this stage of darkness. Um, but we know, we have the truth, and we know that uh, a Redeemer was sent. And uh, yep. And now we have been brought out of the darkness, and now we are in the light. Because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we are reconnected to the life source, and we can see. But today, there's still people that don't know that they're even in darkness. Um, now we can see it because our eyes have been opened and we can see the light. Um, but, uh, yeah, so then, uh, because of Jesus' gift to us, the church was born. Go ahead there. Okay, yeah. And now we are a part of something. We'll go back here. Uh, we're part of the body of Christ. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And I'm just going to read for you 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 20. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? 
but our bodies have many parts, and God put it each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. So it's the same thing I was just saying about how good it is to see the diversity of, of the body with you guys today and the different ways that you do it. God's made us all different. He delights in variety. Just look at nature, all the different kinds of flowers and animals that, uh, that just proclaim his greatness. And so it is with people as well. We know that, you know, um, just having a newborn in the home, we can already remember when our oldest was really little and just the little things that they were as a baby, and you can see it in his personality now. We have been made uh, with variety, and it's just incredible. Um, but we all got here the same way. We're all a part of the body of Christ because of, of Christ's work on the cross. And uh, at one point, we were not part of the body. But we've all been baptized into, into the body by one spirit, and we're designed to work together in cooperation with one another. Because what good would a body be if the foot and the leg don't agree, right? And so how do we decide what is the right thing to agree upon? Well, it's because of what Jesus says. He's the head, and we follow his directions. Um, so again, we'll go wide view again, and we're just going to look at one of the ways, as we zero in, uh, one of the ways that God is reaching people with the truth. Um, let me read here. Uh, Once the body was established, uh, Jesus was speaking to the disciples before he ascended to heaven in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, uh, also known as the Great Commission. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So that's one of the instructions that the head gave the body, is to go into the world and preach the gospel, share the good news that has so affected our lives and made us new in him. So that's evangelism. But now we're going to focus on, go ahead, uh, just one of the ways that God's doing that, and that's through our organization that we've joined, Ethnos 360. So God is reaching people in our communities as well, right? Here, right here uh, in this area, but then also around the world. And so Ethnos 360 has a specific desire of bringing the gospel to the last unevangelized people groups of the world. Because today in America, you can stop at any church and hear the gospel or hear the truth or find a Bible. But there's still people groups, entire peoples that have no access to the Bible today. And so it's our heart to, to change that. And uh, also, another thing that's important is uh, bringing the gospel to the heart language of people. Um, because if nobody's ever learned their language, they may learn, let's say, uh, a trade language or a way that they can communicate in their country. But that's not the way that they learned how to think. We want to make sure the gospel goes right to their heart. And so it's our goal to bring the gospel and translate it into these languages. So, uh, you can go ahead. So, we're just going to focus on, uh, as we uh, dial in even further, we're going to focus on one country that, that we're working with, which is Papua New Guinea. And it's right above, you can see Australia is pointing right up to the orange country. And that is Papua New Guinea. Go ahead. And just for perspective, this is what Pennsylvania looks like up against PNG. Um, and there are over 800 languages spoken in this country, which is the most dense place in the world. There's more languages here than anywhere else. Just incredible. Uh, go ahead. This map, uh, I, you'll see a lot of map pictures. I'm kind of into it. I really enjoy uh, see, <laughs> seeing the maps. But this one in particular is really an encouragement to me because this represents all of the people groups that have been reached with the gospel uh, or are currently being reached by our mission over the last 75 years. Uh, and it's purely because of the cooperation of the body. Um, so we're going to zoom in here. Go ahead. Yep. So this is the central region. Um, and you can click ahead. This right here, the three, uh, number three in a square there, is where Julie and I are going to be living, up in the Highlands region uh, at Lapilo Center, which is the headquarters for our mission. Um, but as we continue to dive in, I want to focus in on a, a people group here. Or, yep. Okay, so this is the Denangit people group. 
and they have the gospel in their language. The gospel came to these people about 15 years ago. And being convinced of the truth, uh, they have felt the need to go and reach others with the gospel as well. And so they've been expressing that to their missionaries. They're like, hey, is there anybody else out there? Because they don't have a, a worldwide perspective like we might, right? Um, but they're like, hey, is there anybody else out there that doesn't have the truth? And they're like, well, yeah, yeah, that's actually what our mission's doing. We're trying to re we reached you guys, and we're trying to reach others. And they're sa they said, well, we want to be a part of that as well. So go ahead. So they have decided to partner with our mission and try to go and reach these people. Which, next slide. This, this is the Uduwa people. And uh, this is their airstrip. And uh, these guys have not heard the gospel before. Uh, and their world is left on that first slide we had, back in darkness. When mankind was cut off, they have yet to hear the good news that we can be reconnected to the life source. And so we want to bring the gospel to them. Uh, so I have a three-minute video. We're going we're gonna to hear from the missionaries that are going to reach the Uduwa. And so we can play that now. The Uruwa people are hungry for God's word. At least that's what we had heard. You know, we had much communication with them and every single time we talked, it seemed like they were hungry for God's word, but we had really only been in there for 45 minutes. So we knew we had to go in and see for ourselves really what their hearts were saying. Yeah, so the last week of October, Luke and I, we went on a survey. We had the chance to go into the Udua people with church leaders from the neighboring people group, the Denangit people. We all went together to hike to all these different villages to tell them what we do as an organization, the four things we do, that we learn their language and culture, that we teach them to read and write in their language, that we teach them God's word from beginning to end, and that we translate God's word into their language so that they can hold it and have it for a lifetime. And once we had told this to all the communities, we gave them all an opportunity to respond or to ask questions if they had any questions. And the response from every one of the communities that we went to was just incredibly positive. People were standing up and proclaiming that they don't know God's word and they need to know it. And there are, there are translations in other languages, but they don't understand it. And so they are desperate for this work to come to them so that they may be able to understand God's word. We were overwhelmed by how excited, how pumped people were to know God's word for us to come. And so we had to keep telling people, hey, we have to talk to our leadership, we have to talk to our team. But honestly, when we got back from the survey, it was clear that we needed to go to the Udwa people and be their missionaries. We decided to go back as a team, back as families, and tell them exactly that, that we would be their missionaries. And it was a wonderful time for our families, for our kids, for our wives to meet the community, to see the crazy rugged mountains that they'll get to live among. And we, as a team, we are so excited to soon be building our houses among the Udua people. Thank you guys so much for praying for us and for the Udua people. Isn't that cool? That totally pumps me up. Uh, it's just awesome. I mean, the gospel is going forward. And now you guys have seen their faces. Those people are going to hear the gospel for the first time in their people's history. And uh, so the gospel is going forward. Definitely is. And that's pretty cool. Um, but so the, the two missionaries there, Luke and Nathan, they're going to be the ones that go and reach them, right? Because they've had some training. They now know how to write a language that's never been written before how to learn it, and then how to translate that and uh, translate the Bible into this new language. And they have consultant checks to make sure, hey, is the listener actually, can they respond and tell you, uh, read it back to you, and uh, make sure that they have the right story in their mind. 
Uh, so they have a whole method for that, and these guys have been trained for that. Uh, I haven't, and uh, I never thought I would be. Um, and so, and I still think that. I've never felt that the Lord was leading me to be a church planner um, and learn another language uh, and translate it. But God delights in the variety of the Bible, or of, of the body, and the different roles that we can play because these guys can't reach them by themselves. Because you saw, like you see how, how mountainous it is. How are they even going to get there? Well, we have an entire aviation program. So, next slide, please. We need a whole support apparatus of people that can support them so that they can stay out there. Okay? So, medical staff. We have a clinic that is available to us, and it is keeping the wheels running. It is keeping things on its feet. Because that's a, that's a real... Um, that's a real challenge, uh, is understanding like, hey, what's our contingency plan? If something, if someone were to get injured, what are we going to do? Just a million different things that we have to think about. So they need a whole team of people that can support them. And uh, if you guys heard, right at the end of the video there, they said that we're going to be building our houses soon uh, to reach the Uruwa. Well, that, that video came out around in November, and uh, since then, uh, the team that Julia and I will be joining, uh, which is Technical Services, uh, has built their houses. And uh, it's pretty cool. So I just want to introduce you to this guy. This is Josh Simmons. And uh, he is one of the guys that's serving with Tech Services. And uh, I asked him if I could share some pictures of the work that's been going on there. And so we'll just blitz through those real quick. Um, but these are these are their houses. This is in Uruwa. So uh, in New Guinea, they build their houses on stilts. Um, so lots for me to learn, um, but go ahead, and you can see they put their, their flooring together, rolling here, and putting their walls up, under roof, go ahead, okay, um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, okay, okay. Um, so, so yeah, they've gotten those houses done, and uh, because of that, the work can continue. Where before, we didn't have a team that was dedicated to building. So that's pretty encouraging, and, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to getting over there. But it's not just, it's not just um, all the bush build. We also have those support people. They live on bases, and that's the base that we're going to live on as well. And uh, so... We also are responsible for the maintenance and upkeep and new construction on those bases so that we can all be housed. And it keeps the gears running. Um, if the most that we can do to keep things working in a practical sense, the more that we can reach people with the gospel. Um, so, okay. Could you show me the next slide? Okay, all right. We'll go back one then. All right. Um, it's got a little gap there, but that's okay. Uh, so what's next for us is we are going to Florida in late June for pre-field orientation. Uh, and so this is going to give us some training on how to live in a foreign country because this is all new to us. And uh, it's pretty quick, actually, too. Um, we've only been really pursuing this for about a year, so uh, pretty cool. Um, but we'll be doing that. And then um, go ahead. And then so this whole phase for us has been partnership development. Um, so we have been working on passports and work permits, uh, so you can be praying for that. We're looking to get our, our work permits back from the New Guinea government to make sure that we can go, as well as getting up to date on all our vaccinations and uh, dental appointments, stuff like that. And then uh, also packing. Uh, Julia is a master packer, but she's only got like six totes to, to put her whole life in, so uh, we've got that going on as well. Um, but this chapter of our life has looked like this, partnership development. So what does that mean? Um, well, it's been meeting with pastors and sharing with different churches just to see uh, if others feel led to, to be a part of this as well through us. And uh, I just love the picture of the partnership because you can see practically, oh, the church planner needs the builder, needs the pilot. Um, but each one of those people that's sent over there also has an entire team that's supporting them so that they can be there. And so that's what we're doing right now. We're building our team. Um, go ahead. 
Okay, so I put this in big, bold letters just to demystify the whole money thing because it's not about give me money at all. It's about partnership in the gospel, right? And this is the reality. This is how people can partner together uh, for the glory of God so that other people can know. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, so this is what we need to raise is $7,725 a month. If that hits you like a brick wall and, and uh, sounds like a crazy number, I totally understand. Go ahead. So I've written up this little document here that's in our packets. So at, at the end of the service, go ahead and grab a packet. Our table's set up uh, in the foyer there, and you can kind of understand some of the factors of why this is such an expensive endeavor. Um, so go ahead and give those a look. Now, when we talked to you guys in November, we were at 12%. And, uh, and we had a long way to go, but the Lord's been faithful, and go ahead. We are currently at 46%, praise the Lord, and uh, you guys are a part of that. Uh, this church picked us up and uh, is now a part of our team and is uh, uh, partly responsible for, for getting us over there so that we can, we can help the gospel move forward. And go ahead. But our mission only requires us to be at 75%. 100% is the, the way that we can be the most effective, but uh, the minimum is 75, and so we're not that far away. We're only 20, 29% away from our goal. Um, but just for reference, because uh, I've heard that this makes it a little easier to understand, 1% is about $75 a month. Um, and uh, so I just put that up there for, uh, just to make it a little easier to understand. Go ahead. Okay, so... Uh, then, just explaining our timeline a little bit, um, we are looking for uh, that paperwork to come back from the government uh, so that we can go. And uh, so we've got that going. And then, of course, we're going to Florida in June for training. And then we need, or our, in order to hit our goal, uh, we're looking to have 75% in July uh, so that we can fly in August. And the reason for that is because August 12th, starts our classes in New Guinea to learn language and culture uh, so that we can be effective over there. Um, so the language isn't that difficult. It's about, it's an English Creole. So there's a, uh, some English in there. So if you heard it, you'd actually pick some of it up. Um, so it's about three to six months for fluency. And a large part of my job will actually be working with national citizens uh, working together. Uh, so that's our goal. But if we don't reach our goal by that point, that's okay. Um, we can always uh, go a little bit later because the next classes start in, <clears throat> start in uh, January. And uh, we could also go a little earlier. Uh, we don't have to go in January um, because there's lots of work to do and they could plug us in somewhere before those classes start. Yeah, <clears throat> so if you could be praying for us, uh, pray that our paperwork will come through and, uh, and that the Lord will raise our support. And I put the support in a, at 100% just because we want to trust the Lord. Um, this is not a pressure thing at all. The Lord is choosing to use the body to support us and to support others so that the gospel can go out. And uh, so that's, there's no human pressure from us, and it shouldn't be that way. We can trust him, and he will provide for our needs. But also, I just ask that if you could be praying for our family, we have been through a whirlwind, signing up for this, and then we're like, hey, let's have another baby, and um, our life has just been upside down for a little bit, but we're, we're excited about it, we're, uh, we're thankful for, for this time, but yeah, and just especially pray for mom, because she's doing uh, a really good job. Um, so I put this map back on there, just to show you what the cooperation of the body can do, the partnership in the church. Um, and I'll have this on our table in greater detail if you actually wanted to go take a look, see the names of these people groups. Um, currently, there's 36 New Testaments completed that we've, we've gone through, and there's 46 active works where missionaries are still translating or have yet to uh, share the gospel. And we can get this job done in our generation, guys. It's really cool. What an exciting time to be alive. Uh, it wasn't that long ago when missionary endeavors didn't have tools like airplanes and, uh, you know, even translation uh, software and stuff like that. And uh, so it's, it's become, in part, a problem of logistics. And so last year, uh, my parents are also missionaries, 
and they serve in New Guinea, and this is, in a way, it's almost kind of sprung up on us, uh, because I got to go and visit my folks and, for about a week, and just through conversations with people, I learned about this technical services uh, department. I had heard things about it, but I didn't realize how possible it was, and so the Lord really laid it on our hearts to, to go and fill a need there, and so here we are, um, and uh, yeah, so we can, we can get it done. And people can hear the gospel. Um, verse 18, 1 Corinthians 12, 18, that we were reading earlier. Our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. So just ask yourself, what does that look like today? For me, it's going, and it's going to share uh, with my skills so that others can share the gospel. Um, but who knows, what does that look like for you? Um, so in closing here, uh, I'll put this picture up. Does anybody know who this is? Probably not. Well, this is, this is your missionary. Next year celebrates 500 years that William Tyndale brought the gospel to English. The New Testament was translated into English. And uh, this is just a food for thought. Sometimes, as Americans especially, we forget that we are a people group as well. Now, myself, I don't even know what my heritage is. Um, I have no idea. Uh, but I know I'm not Jewish, and the Jews were the ones that received the gospel first, right? Well, somebody had to bring the gospel into our language so that we could hear for the first time, and we've had it for 500 years. Aren't we thankful for the truth being in our language so that we can know the truth? Um, next slide. Coming to these guys next. They are the next to hear it, and you've seen their faces in that video. And uh, so we can just be so thankful that, the God, is mo that God is moving. And uh, I just want to thank you all for, for being behind us. I'm, I'm not sure how our time went or, or our, our timing is, um, but that's okay. And I just encourage you all to grab a packet um, that we have in the back there because it will explain a lot more about what we're doing. And uh, I'll just close this in a word of prayer here.